The candles are lit and everyone sits around the Ouija board and places their fingers on the planchette. It starts to move around the board as if something has taken control. It starts to spell out a name, the name of the grandmother of one of the participants. Suddenly, there's a strong gust of wind and the candles are blown out. A few meters away, a ghostly figure rises from the ground and it runs towards them, running across the board and through them. They run in fear. Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. I'm your host, Clem Dalloway, and this episode is part one of Haunted Redditch, a collection of ghost stories that I've collected from my hometown over the last 20 years. Redditch was first mentioned in 1348, the year of the outbreak of the Black Death. The town is thought to have gained its name from the red clay in the nearby River Arrow, which gives the water an orange colour. The town became a centre for needle making in the Middle Ages. These needles were shipped all over the world. In 1964, Redditch was declared a new town, and estates were built to house the overpopulated industrial city of Birmingham. The land in which Abbeydale was developed on belonged to two farms, Easemore Farm on Easemore Road, and Old Farm, which stood to the east of Arrow Road South, and was accessible from Beely Road East. Easemore Road finished at a dead end, but had little lanes that led off to other small farms in the area. During Victorian times, Terry's Field was used as a recreation area and general meeting place. Only a small part of the field survives. It is still used for recreational activities. Abbeydale was built following the Homes for Heroes pledge after the general election in 1951 and to help cope with the population boom. There were a lot of soldiers and migrants who lived on the estate after World War II, many living in the prefabricated bungalows, some of which are still standing on Dolphin Road. The Abbeydale Club in Woodfield Close was started in the 1950s by residents at a community and social club. In 2017, the decorator was working at the Abbeydale Club's function room. He felt uneasy, as if someone was watching him. So he set up the video camera on his phone and left it recording. The video captured a door at the back of the room opening and a chair moving across the floor. The club has a large function room and is popular for all types of events, such as birthday parties and weddings. Many people have said that they have felt a presence when they're in that room. In 2008, a married couple booked the Abbeydale Club function room for their wedding anniversary. They were with their teenage children who were helping to set up the food in the Skittle Alley. They suddenly felt a cold presence. When they turned towards the door to go back into the function room, two of them saw a man walking through it, away from them. They described him as being tall, around six foot four, and was very broad. He disappeared right in front of them. Members of staff have also had paranormal experiences. The doors at the back of the function room are pushed open when no one is in the club. Chairs have been moved. Noises come from the cellar and the door in the bar area has been known to open on its own. An ex-barmaid of the club 
had an encounter in a house which she lived in near to the club, in Woodfield Close. When she was 18 years old, she had a part-time job at the Abbeydale Club. When she was getting ready for work one night, she felt the hair stand up on the back of her neck. She thought nothing of it at first, but as she continued to dry and style her hair in the mirror, the face of a young man appeared next to her. His mouth was open as if he was screaming, but no sound came out. She ran all the way to the club and told some of the customers what happened. A few of them went back to the house to find the door wide open, but there was no one inside. This happened a few times when she lived at the property. When her niece used to stay at the property years before, she used to regularly see a figure standing in one of the bedrooms. As we know, children are playful. Perhaps they still are in the afterlife. When a young girl and her brother were around nine or ten years old, they were in the back garden of their older sister's house in Woodfield Close. At the very end of the garden, the fence would dip down so you could see into the next garden. They met a little girl there called Charlotte. They were playing all sorts of games with Charlotte, like I Spy, but then they were called home for their dinner. They were gone for around 20 minutes, but they had told Charlotte that they would come back and call for her after they'd eaten. After dinner, they knocked on the door and Charlotte wasn't there. The people who lived there didn't have a daughter. The estate of Lakeside is very near to Abbeydale. Part of Lakeside was developed on Old Farm and Holloway Farm, which was on the corner of what is now Arthur Street and Holloway Lane. Beely Road was built in Victorian times and was originally called Beely Lane. At the bottom of the road was Beely Brook, where the road crossed part of the River Arrow. This was one of the main roads in and out of Redditch to Birmingham. The brook was a dangerous crossing where many fatal accidents occurred over the years and it would often flood. One night, a group of teenage friends had a strange experience in the area. They learned not to mess about with things that they didn't understand. In 1992, one of the boys was learning carpentry at college and he made a wooden Ouija board. His friends wanted to try it out, but not in any of their houses. So they decided to do it on the field, which is now trees, just after the river at the bottom of Beely Road. Two of the group of friends didn't use the board, they just observed. It was summer and they were able to light candles without them blowing out which they placed around the board. After they used the board for a short while, it spelt out a full name, including the middle name. It was the name of the grandmother of one of the boys who were observing. She lived about 50 miles away and none of them knew her. Of course, this upset him, but when he got home, he found out that his grandmother had died that very same evening. They stayed on the board for quite a while afterwards. Suddenly, a large gust of wind blew across the field and blew the candles out. They could see something around 20 metres away that seemed to be climbing out of the ground. It ran through them and it seemed to be a very tall figure. Of course, they ran away. Everyone went home. The Ouija board was thrown in an old wooden garage nearby at the back of Sillins Avenue. The next day, one of them went to retrieve the board so they could get rid of it properly. But the garage had burned down. He looked through the debris and found the board intact. He threw it deep into some bushes and never saw it again. The garage is now gone. Houses have been built where the garage stood. The garage would have stood 
on one of the allotments at the back of the houses on Sillens Avenue. The allotments are now gone and the land now has energy saving modern houses. Margaret, Llewellyn, Davis close. Even though they are new houses, the land still has a past. In 2012, a young family moved into one of these new houses that were built on the plot of the old allotments. Not long after moving in, the lady of the house started feeling that someone was watching her. She put it down to being in a new house and surroundings. Then she had a friend over one evening. It was dark outside. He started to feel strange as soon as he walked in. They sat in the kitchen, having a coffee, and his chair was kicked at the bottom of the legs, swinging him out and spilling his coffee everywhere. She grabbed a cloth to clean up and happened to look out of the window. They both saw a man standing outside and staring at them, looking very angry. She went to turn the outside light on at the back door so they could see who it was. She opened the curtains of the door and the apparition was stood right outside of the door, staring right at them. He was dressed in 16th century style clothes, as if he was very rich. They closed the curtains quickly and backed away from the door. The door started to shake. Then it stopped. Her friend left. He was too scared to stay. When she finally went to bed, she felt like there was someone there. She was on her own at the time. Not much happened for a few months. But when her boyfriend used to come and stay, he would wake up to a man standing at the bedroom door wearing a long coat, which she could see too. They could never see his face as it was too dark. No menace was ever felt by her, but her partner used to feel like it was threatening him. She also used to have things moving around. When her daughter was younger, she used to get woken up by a girl's laugh. She would be so tired in the morning due to being woken up a lot. The door handles in her room would rattle like someone was shaking the handle. The door would actually bang and then all of a sudden it would stop. Farm Road is southeast of Sillins Avenue and ends at Arthur Street. These houses were built before World War II on land that once belonged to Holloway Farm. In the 1980s, a young boy and his sisters used to visit their grandparents and stay overnight at the weekend. Their grandmother used to put the electric blanket on the bed while they sat downstairs eating cheese and crackers for supper while watching Match of the Day. When their grandmother put them to bed, she would put on a huge pile of blankets and tuck them in tight. They could not move and the heat would send them to sleep in minutes. On a few occasions, they would see shadows walking around the walls. They couldn't be from outside as the curtains were shut and there was no light at the back of the house. Their grandfather had a plant on the windowsill at the top of the stairs. Many times they would wake up and find it on the banister. Years later in the 1990s, a friend of the boys moved into the house with his parents. They were typical teenagers of that time, into motorbikes and rock music. They were fixing up a bike in the dining room and were listening to an album on vinyl. They had only just put it on, very loud as his parents were out, when suddenly the last song on the B-side was playing. They took a look and turned it back over, and a few minutes later, it happened again. They turned it off and went out. Another house from Farm Road has a ghost story. From when he was around five years old, a little boy used to play alone very often in his bedroom. He always used to play with another little boy who had dark hair, similar looking to himself. He never knew his name, as he never made a sound he never mentioned anything to his parents until years after they had moved house. When he told his mum about it, 
She said that before they moved into the house, a young boy had died from a brain tumour. Winstone Close was built in the 1970s. It was built between Sillins Avenue and Kingsley Avenue. It is believed that there was a row of three cottages along here that were destroyed by a fire in the early 20th century. During the 1990s, a family lived in the house at the top half of Winston Close, just behind Sillins Avenue. At first, they started to see a misty shape that looked like a skirt. Eventually, they started to see a woman with a skirt on, walking in various parts of the downstairs of the house. One day, one of the children had been playing outside with some friends when he went back to the house to get a drink. He stood with his friends in the hallway when the pedals on his bike started to spin very fast. They all ran out and his mom was just shocked. They had a big war unit in the living room and the children used to take it in turns to remove all of the many ornaments to polish it. One day, when one of the shelves had been polished and everything put back on, one of the ornaments slowly turned around. This became a regular occurrence until one day when they were all sat down in the living room watching TV when the same ornament just flew across the room like somebody had thrown it. When one of the older siblings had left home and had a child, he wouldn't go to certain areas of the house as he said that Jimmy was there. He used to say that Jimmy was nice but he was scared of him. One night when walking up the stairs, the boy of the house saw a little boy walking down towards him. He was terrified. This started to happen on a regular basis. Even his very skeptical dad would see him. He was at his friend's house one day, who lived three doors away, when there was a knock at the door. She answered, and there were three children stood there. One of the boys asked if they knew where his mommy was. He looked out of the door and noticed that it was the boy that he'd seen in the house, with another boy and a girl. Other neighbours in the area used to talk about a little boy going into their houses too, looking for his ball. One of the older residents of the area heard about it. He said that there used to be a row of cottages on the same site when he was a child. He said that there was a bad fire that took all of the cottages and three children were killed in the blaze. Perhaps the woman they used to see was the mother of the three children and she was looking for them. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. You can find more information on the episodes on the website ghosttales.co.uk We have a Facebook page, Ghost Tales Podcast and you can also find us on Instagram at Ghost Tales Podcast. This podcast will be out monthly and is available on most podcast platforms. All music, research, writing, production, art and sound effects are my own work. Ghost Tales by the Fireside